Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about hosting an ASP.NET MVC Core application in Service Fabric. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by uh, adding a new Service Fabric service to our existing solution. And that's going to actually be using the ASP.NET Core MVC template itself. And then I'm going to show you uh, one important thing that you're going to need to know uh, in order to actually be able to host uh, and then access that application and all of the content that comes with it, specifically um, the JavaScript files, the different images. And uh, one important thing you need to know in order to make the actual content serviceable uh, or accessible through the um, application gateway uh, that is going to be used in Service Fabric to make it a scalable application. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I have in front of me right now is the Service Fabric Explorer. And uh, Service Fabric Explorer uh, basically shows you right now that I have five nodes, but I don't have any applications deployed. So I already have the uh, solution open, and this is something that we worked on in the last video. So if you're interested, go ahead and look at that video uh, uh, before. And uh, what I have here is uh, the SF Context API application um, service, and then the actual application itself. So in order to add an existing uh, or add to an existing application, you basically just right click on the actual main application, go ahead and click add, and then there's an option to add new service to the uh, to that service fabric application. I'm going to go ahead and choose a stateless ASP.NET Core as the uh, service type template, and I'm just going to call it sfcontacts.ui, uh, and that's going to represent my UI application. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, Web Application MVC and hit OK here. So uh, this basically created a new uh, project and added it to my solution. And uh, what we're going to do real quick is uh, just uh, show you how to make sure that um, your profile is chosen correctly. So. Uh, when you right click and uh, click on publish you'll notice that the target profile is automatically set to cloud um, or one of your uh, other profiles that you ended up using in the prior videos and here i i still have my dev sf uh, dot five node xml so i'll go ahead and choose that and uh, you'll notice that the parameters file is selected as well so since i just added a new project one of the things that i'm going to do is i'm going to click edit and I'm going to change the default value for how many instances do I want to deploy by default. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, set it to 2 for the sfcontext.ui uh, instance count. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And um, the other important thing that I forgot to mention in the last video is when you actually um, go ahead and select this particular target profile, you also need to make sure your connection endpoint is set as well. In this case, I'm actually pointing to one of my nodes inside of my cluster. Now, if you actually had a load balancer in front of your five node cluster, you would actually point it to uh, your load balancer um, itself uh, on that given port. So, uh, and the way that you actually uh, enable that uh, connection or specify that uh, connection string is in a, one of these files here, uh, specifically, I believe it's the, um, let's see, it is located inside of our uh, published profile right here. Um, and uh, what you'll see by default is the cluster connection parameters uh, element is going to actually be specified here, but it's not going to have a connection endpoint. So all I had to do is basically just put a space and then it would give me IntelliSense. You would choose the connection endpoint as the actual attribute to set and then you point it to your node in the cluster or that load balancer that you have configured. So once you save this, it will automatically be selecting it when you go to the publish uh, section. And then when you choose your particular target profile, it will automatically populate this value right here. And then if you choose publish, it will actually go ahead and publish it out. Now that's what I'm going to do right now, and since I've already uh, had a variation of this application deployed before, I'm going to go ahead and choose upgrade the application, and then I'll go ahead and uh, just make the version numbers match um, the same version number. So I'll just go ahead and uh, choose uh, 1.0.2 for all of them. 
and then I'll go ahead and hit save. Um, also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the deployment model to unmonitored auto. So, and I'll go ahead and save this and then hit publish. Now, this is actually going to go ahead and uh, compile the application and start uh, the, the publishing process into the service fabric itself. So, we'll see that in a second here. So you'll notice it's actually starting to copy the actual file to the image store, which basically is a share inside of the service fabric to be able to uh, share between the different nodes as it replicates the different uh, instances of that across the service fabric nodes. So it's uploading the image, um, or actually finished it, and then we can actually see that it's beginning the actual deployment process. So you'll notice here that I have my individual services already. And then if I start expanding it, you'll see the, the nodes. And you'll notice that the application is starting to actually deploy, as well as the actual services are showing up in a healthy state now. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I have my uh, three instances of the API, as well as one instance of the actual, or two instances of the uh, UI application. So if I navigate to this URL right here, I should be able to actually get to my application. So as you can see, this is basically a, a normal uh, base uh, ASP.NET Core MVC project template. Everything is functional, so if I go ahead and navigate uh, to the different pages, everything is loading correctly. Now, um, in this particular case, since I'm actually navigating directly to a particular node, this is not very helpful because uh, I want to be able to use the application gateway. So I'll go ahead and, um, and actually point it to URL for that particular application gateway. And uh, we'll uh, change the port here. So we'll go to uh, 19081. Uh, and then uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, before we actually had the API project. So here we'll just uh, go to the UI project. So it's going to be that name of your application slash the actual service name. So I'll go ahead and navigate to that. And the first thing you'll actually notice is that it looks a little bit different. Um, basically, we don't have any content show up here and the reason for that is we actually open up the dev tools um, in the browser here and go ahead and refresh this page you'll notice that um, it's actually going to be uh, missing a whole bunch of uh, files so specifically it's not able to get the css files the the javascript files and all of the images are not coming through and the reason for that if you actually take a look at the url it's actually trying to navigate to so let's copy it out into the browser and see what it is. So in this particular case, you can see that basically it doesn't have uh, that uh, prefix, which is the application name as well as the service name. And the reason why it does that is because the reverse proxy is not actually uh, appending that information um, within the application. So it's basically not doing URL rewriting when it's actually generating the content uh, of the application. So uh the easiest way uh, so far that i found to actually fix that problem is by adjusting actual code within your um, asp.net mvc core application now there's uh, probably different ways of doing it um the uh, the quick and dirty way that i have discovered how to do that is you can actually write a little bit of code to uh to figure out your application path um, and actually change your uh, URLs that are being referenced inside of your application. So let's do that real quick um, so we can actually get it uh, functioning. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our views, and there's actually a couple of places where we're going to want to make this update. The first place is going to be the layout uh, itself. So the layout is where we actually uh, reference a whole bunch of different things. So in this particular case, yeah, uh, it's a fallback URL to the bootstrap. There's also the URL to the site uh, CSS file. Uh, there's some uh, URL references to the actual uh, JavaScript files as well. So now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change these uh, tildes here uh, to actually point to the root of the application that in, you know, basically it, it will be a base URL path that I can set. So, um, and the way I'm going to do that is I uh, actually can uh, invoke uh, a service that is injected by default in into our service fabric application, and it's actually a stateless service context object. 
And what this will allow you to do is actually ask it uh, for the actual full path, or in this particular case, it would be the um, the application name slash and then the service name. And the way you do that is in your view, you basically add this inject statement, give it the type, and then give it the name uh, how you're going to be referencing it in your view. And then what I'm doing here is I'm uh, basically populating a variable called base URL. And I am uh, referencing that service context, getting the service name, and getting the absolute path for that. So, and now I can actually go ahead and start using this particular uh, value right here. And then I can start replacing all of these tildes uh, with, uh, with that variable. So I'll use the add symbol and I'll go ahead and start replacing all of these tildes here. So um, that is done. And I'll go ahead and copy this because we're going to need to use this in our validation script partial as well. So I'll just go ahead and paste that in here. And I'll go ahead and uh, do this real quick. Okay. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, now that uh, that just fixed all of the path to the different files that we have, uh, but we still need to actually fix the the logic for the actual images, and those are actually inside of our index um, CSHTML uh, file itself. So let's go ahead and uh, fix that as well. So again, I added the inject statement, and then I'm just gonna uh, replace the tildes here for where the images are being actually referenced. Okay, so that looks like uh, we're good to go. So I'll go ahead and actually save this. And um, once it's saved, I can go ahead and publish this out. So again, right click, I'll go ahead and publish. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, reset the, um, the version number. 2.3 and uh, you don't have to do this uh, the way I'm doing it I just wanted to keep all the version numbers the same so I'm changing the version number for this uh, for both packages but if you're not really updating that uh, package you probably shouldn't actually be uh, doing that anyway so um, just for the purpose of a demo I wanted to keep everything consistent um, so I can actually roll it back as I'm going through the development cycle so um, I'll go ahead and uh, hit publish here and uh, let's give it a moment for it to actually go ahead and um, update the application. And you can actually watch the upgrade process by clicking on applications. And uh, there's this tab here for upgrade in progress. So you'll actually notice um, the actual different steps that it's going through uh, for the upgrade to occur. Okay, as you can see, the application deployment has completed. So if I take a look at my uh, main cluster cluster dashboard, you'll see that everything is healthy. And uh, what I should be able to do now is uh, go to my application again. And again, we're going through the actual proxy, the application gateway itself. So if I go ahead and refresh this, it's going to take a moment and rebuild. And uh, you can see that all of the content now is showing up uh, correctly. And the reason for that is because if I actually uh, take a look at the URLs, you'll notice that now we have the, the proper uh, URL prefix after the port number is specified. Now, uh, one of the problems that I still need to solve is I, I've just made changes to the static content that is being rendered, but the actual application content itself is still not being replaced. So. Specifically, uh, what I'm talking about is if I hover over the, the home page, you'll notice that the actual uh, URL that is being generated is actually different. So if I uh, try to open it up, you'll actually see that it's going to the root path. Uh, now, it's not actually working because there's no such path 
uh, for the actual application gateway. The same thing goes for about and context uh, pages. They're trying to go to the root uh, of the actual um, URL itself and slash home slash about, which is a normal behavior of your ASP.NET application. But because we're hosting a beside, uh, behind uh, uh, an application gateway that doesn't rewrite URLs, that's one of the things we're going to have to actually address in a future video. So uh, hopefully this was uh, somewhat useful to you in terms of being able to begin to understand how to host your applications. Uh, the benefits of this obviously are the fact that now I actually have a, a scalable um, .NET application um, which is uh, being written in ASP.NET Core MVC uh, hosted in Service Fabric, which is a very scalable platform. Now, some of the intricacies of it are, are the things that we just covered, but there's also interesting things that uh, I'm going to be covering in next video about um, how to actually change your routing, as well as in the future videos, we're going to be talking about how do you communicate with other backend services. So as an example, um, you could see that I have my API service, uh, which can provide me with information about uh, the contacts that might be stored in a database. And we're going to be discussing all of those topics over the next few videos. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave your feedback in the comment section below. Um, if you're interested in this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I will be releasing more videos and hopefully they will be useful to you. So hopefully this was good and um, I look forward to talking to you in the future.